You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale Grace's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. These men who return when many others have not are our saviors too. Dear Lord, our saviors too, dear Lord. With your strength and their strength, we have beaten down our enemies. In this crusade against the godless invaders, you have favored our Christian Scott brethren, our humble children of God, who serve thee tirelessly. My clasped hands are squeezing tighter and tighter. I feel my fingertips crushing my knuckles. The sermon is false and mocking. Every word tightens my chest and brings hot tears to my eyes. There's nothing Christian about killing fellow men. Nothing heroic saying a human body sliced apart. Brutality may be biblical, but it is only hellish and demonic. It's as if the pew is, cl is clamping onto me and won't let go. Tighter and tighter it squeezes. And so I beg of this congregation to thank our Father, His Son, and our blessed sons of Ech in Echnacrig, who have returned from the ravages of war. Thank them all for, thank them for all they are and for all the goodness and power. May they always prevail and give glory to Thy name. The sermon continues, but I'm not there to hear it. I silently exit the church through the back door, relieved to be out in the open air again. A few concerned faces watch me leave, but I don't care. It takes all my focus to push all my current rage away, bury burying it deep somewhere beneath a breaking heart. Uh, hey there. I look up and see the girl from the pub, the sweet girl in the funny hat which she's still wearing, that first friendly face on my first evening back. Hello, I'm sorry. It was just getting claustrophobic in there. Did you make my exit? Did my exit make a scene? No, it's fine. I just wanted to make sure you're all right. It lifts my heart that a near stranger would reach out. That's awfully kind of you. Say, thank you for the warm welcome at the Stag and Annie the other night. You remember me? Yours was the first kind face I'd seen in some time. Yours as well. Even having been here a while, it's been hard making friends. I could sympathize. It's a very small town. You know, I really appreciated your kindness. You seemed like a popular fellow that night. Otherwise, I would have chatted with you a bit more. Well then, thank you for saying hello today. Ah, forgive me. We've not had a proper introduction. The name's Malcolm. It's I'm Effie. It's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. When she smiles again, my soul feels lighter. Another stranger who I want to talk to, to confess my troubles to. But something is nagging at me. Who is she, really? Do I know you? You look familiar. Her face lights up, but she frowns. I doubt you remember me. We crossed paths a few times before the war, but I never introduced myself. Her sideways smile is warm enough to melt cold butter. It softens the pain in my chest, even if unintentionally. And here I thought I knew everyone in town. I usually keep to myself. I guess I get a little shy around people. I know what you mean. Now the lads are coming home, all the attention has been a bit overwhelming. Unwelcome? No, it's just... I take pause, not knowing if I should be frank. Effie's presence is so inviting that it somehow gives me reason to speak candidly. I'm no hero. I'm just a lucky survivor. I don't deserve praise, and I certainly don't need unwarranted pageantry given by someone painfully ignorant of the horrors of... Stop short of saying war. This conversation ought not to get as dark as what I've just sat through. After all, Effie and I have barely just met. Well, suffice to say, there was nothing glorious about the last four years. I can't fathom how others can hear that vile talk and not be ashamed to agree. Effie doesn't hesitate, responding just as candidly. Malcolm, I imagine that people who haven't experienced certain things, well, they might not know how to talk about them. They don't know what else they can do to comfort those who have been hurt except, well try to honor the survival of those closest to them. Effie shrugs and looks around timidly. It's just a thought. I may have no idea about the thoughts of others. I respect your pragmatism, but I'm not in the right frame of mind to concede to that, concede that the nonsense I've just heard is anything but delusional patriotism. Honestly, I don't quite know what they should do either. What do they know of battle? That's what I want to say. I notice I'm shivering and I stuff my hands in my pockets to keep warm. Even if they don't know what you've been through, everyone understands loss. Their eyes fill with tears, but they don't fall. The others may have suffered too. 
perhaps even as intimately as you have. People mourn in very different ways. I want to retort. Who here could possibly have endured what I have? But I am stopped by Effie's soulful gaze. The reflection of my hollow stare in her spectacles makes me look away. My eyes fall upon a cluster of graves in the shadow of the church. Soberly, I wonder, is Grandad among them? She's right, Gran, Bulgare, the MacLeods even. They've all seen their share of pain. No person is immune to hardship. But they have held out onto hope, I They have held onto hope as well. How? Where do we find hope after what we've been through? I look back up to her. She seems to share a keen ability with my grand to feel around for the ache within me and attempt to soothe the pain. What have I done to deserve this? I think that maybe you should look to the intentions of the people around you. If you do, I think you'll find you have a lot more friends than you realize, who care more than they can express. Her words are reassuring. I hold on to that thought and hope I'm about to be able to relieve only oh, blah. I hold on to that thought and hope I'm able to believe it soon. The least I can do is offer her the same comfort. And undoubtedly the same is true for you. You said you've had trouble making friends, but perhaps you already have more than you know. I wonder if you can date Effie. That'd be interesting. There are many women in town who I'm sure would be glad to take you under their wings. You're a smart and lovely girl. You deserve friendship. Effie turns bright red and looks at me with a face full of ambition and reluctance. Two emotions that fight against each other often. Two feelings I've come to know very well. Perhaps. Her cheeks retain the pink tinge of timidity and her shyness makes me smile. If only she knew how adorable and charming she is. Of course, I keep those thoughts to myself as I don't want to embarrass her further. In the meantime, I'd say routine helps the most. That's what I try to do. Routine distracts me from my negative thoughts on all I can't do and all I don't have. Focus on what you can do and what you do have. Don't ignore the pain, but please, don't let sadness overtake you. You'll adapt. Heal. Life is a gift. Live it to its fullest. I'm taken aback by this candor, and my throat catches. I refuse to stifle the few tears that fall and strut in front of this stranger. Closing my eyes to her as if she's invisible. I am somehow unashamed. I do dry my eyes as a clamor coming through within the church is carried on the breeze. The sermon must have concluded. <clears throat> Effie looks towards the church and back at me. The wind picks up and nearly lifts her cap off. She works hard to pin it back down, laughing. I must be off, but it was very nice to meet with you, Malcolm. I hope we can find a quiet moment to talk again sometime. I can't let her go so quickly especially after her words helped dull the throbbing burning of resentment. Effie, you have certainly improved my spirits just now. Please, and please know it would make me very happy to chat with you again. You take, do take care today. Hmm. Let's do that again. Okay. The bell rings out, and I turn to see people begin to filter out of the church. Agnes emerges from with Marion, looking concerned. They spot me and work their way over. And Malcolm, please let me know if you need anything. Your friends are here for you. The words sound truly heartfelt for someone I've hardly met. I turn back to thank her, but she's gone. She really is good at that disappearing act. Hm. Malcolm, you had us all worried. Is everything all right? No, everything is not all right. I'm realizing that no matter how much I try to put the war behind me, it may haunt me for the rest of my days. But Effie is right. I'm not alone. I look at the two worried faces before me and know that there are people in my life who care. Yes, I think everything is going to be fine. I put on a strong face and to my surprise, Marion takes my hands. Just know that we're here for you, Malcolm. You're a Campbell. Strong to a fault and it's fine to feel weak and ask for help. I'm learning that lesson my own self. Sadness. Sadness can be overwhelming, but don't fall down that rabbit hole. Aye, I've had an awfully hard time yanking you out by your ears. I can't help but laugh at the image, and I'm thankful they've lightened the mood. Thank you, Marion. Grand. Come, let's get you home. Two women exchange knowing glances and bid each other a good day. Agnes and I speak a little on the ride home, but we don't have to. She held, she holds me close, and I know. Agnes and I speak little on the ride home, but we don't have to. She holds me close, and I know that I am loved.
Despite the debacle at the church, I feel closer to God, if only because I sit atop our house and the heavens feel almost in reach. Having all the roofing materials already together from the previous day, I had set myself to patching the house homestead proper. It's not in nearly as bad a shape as the stable was, thankfully. Someone at the door. Sliding myself to the edge, I looked down to find Marion standing there with Grace. Marion, up here! She tilts her head up and waves. Hey there, fella. We brought you a picnic lunch. Care to take a break and spend time with two fair maidens? Goodness, Marion is carrying an oversized basket. I can smell the contents from all the way up here. I make my way down carefully, only stumbling, but on the eaves. Standing behind Marion is Grace, looking more doe-eyed than I remembered from her last encounter. She's holding her hands behind her back, coyly, but I can't tell whether but I can't tell or whether or not it's an act. Grace, you remember Malcolm? I stretch out my dirty hand and yank it back to swipe on my path leg. Grace doesn't seem phased and still reaches out from a grubby palm, shaking it firmly. Nice to see you. I'm sorry again that I don't remember you from school, though. Uh, I'm sorry again that I don't remember you from school, M though Marion assures me we've met in a previous life. Shifting around, I smile abashedly. Honestly, I don't have much of a recollection of you either. That was indeed a lifetime ago, the school days. <laughs> we must make for two very forgettable folks. Oh, crazy, silly girl! We all glance at each other. Marion caves. Fine, the two of you don't exactly stick out in the crowd. All that aside, let's eat. I take a few minutes to clean up and then let the girls lead me out to a hill in the open field under a small stand of alders. The leaves on the branches give good cover. It's such a marvelous day. Marion's enthusiasm is just too feigned. Is it? How so? Naysayers, it's marvelous because we're sharing delicious food with a good friend. Grace smirks at me and I break into a smile. Marion, you better feed us before we turn from forgettable friends into unforgettable wild savages. The girls unpack smoked ham, oat, oat bread and a crock of fresh goat's cheese. I spot a berry tart and clotted cream, as well as a hearty supply of cider. Cider, let's start there. So it begins a rollicking afternoon. Grace is chatty at night of guests. She can spin a good yarn and has a harsh sense of humor. She is open and honest, very clear about never liking school and leaving as soon as her father allowed. I'm an ascetic, a recluse. A recluse is a spider. Fine, then I'm a spider, spinning my web like a spinster spins her twine. I use my web to catch invaders and my twine to rope them up and hang them. She's probably not kidding. What will you do once you hang them? Eat them. Ha! Huh, with your tiny frame, good luck with that. A spider doesn't always eat its prey, often it simply mocks them. Then I shall also mock them. But I have you successfully captured. I have not a clue what a spider does, but I am good at mocking. <laughs> you goose! Grace is laughing, so I don't think I've bruised her ego. Her banter goes on for what seems like hours. At some point, Grace tires. I really need to get back. I've enjoyed this time together, but home is calling. I'll walk you back. No need. I prefer the quiet, if you don't mind. Or even if you do. Grace says goodbye and promises to join in on another altogether entertaining luncheon. Hmm. She's a firecracker. She's a ticking time bomb, and you egging her on. Don't you know that it's a job reserved for her sisters? My apologies, your hands must be full enough with her as is. Who needs their own children when you, ha when you can have a grace? She isn't a child, she doesn't need too much overseeing, does she? She needs guidance, discipline, focus. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Thank you to all of our lovely patrons. I hope you all have a wonderful night. I'm gonna head off and, enjoy and just settle down for the evening. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye